Many educators consistently assert there is more need for quality, sustained professional development, yet many schools continue to struggle with finding effective and engaging ways to reach staff. We're joined today by Mark Engstrom, who has somewhat of a different and innovative way to approach professional learning by asking questions. An experienced administrator, both in the US and internationally, Mark is the current middle school division head at Episcopal School of Baton Rouge and is the chief questioner at Socrates Head of School. Mark, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks for having me, Wallace. It's great to be here. So Mark, what exactly is Socrates Head of School and how did you develop the inspiration for this project? So the project was born out of a disappointing professional development experience that I had. I flew across the country to go to a conference and the two keynote speakers on the opening afternoon were really disappointing. And it's not because they weren't qualified. It's not because they couldn't deliver it well. They were actually great speakers and well qualified. With the first speaker, I felt like I knew everything she had to say from How Children Succeed, the book by Paul Tuff. And in the sec for the second speaker, I felt like I knew everything she was saying from Jay Matthews' book, Work Hard, Be Nice. And I was looking around the room, and it was one of these big hotel conference rooms, you know the scene. And I was thinking, certainly other educators have read these books or similar books, and there's got to be a better way to do professional development in 2018 than this. So this was two years ago. So what did I do? I did the same thing most educators do when they're at Disappointing PD. I started to work. And for me, that looked like building out slides from my next faculty meeting. So I had just read Adam Grant's originals, and I was trying to figure out how we could use his ideas about creativity to impact education. So as I was building out those slides, I did a similar look around the room, and I was thinking, well, why are my faculty getting originals? And that table over there, there's probably a department chair excited about something else, and there's a head of school over there and a superintendent, and educators are getting a smattering of all these books, but there's no where house for all this stuff and I couldn't quite piece it together but I knew I knew we were doing a poor job offering PD to teachers and it just so happened that that night I was reading a book about philosophy and I was in my mid-40s and I had, didn't know a lot about philosophy and I just happened to read the page about Socrates and I learned I didn't know at the time I learned that he was actually condemned to death for corrupting the minds of Athenian youth and it was one of these eureka moments where I put the book down and I thought Here's a man with no, no public title. He's not an elected official. He's not a professor. He wasn't a teacher. He wasn't even a tutor. He just walked around and asked questions. And so it kind of all came to me um, like Frank Johansson's talks about in the Medici effect, the intersection of ideas. I thought, why don't we use the lens of questioning like Socrates to analyze all these great books that are out there to offer teachers better PD. And it all came together. What if Socrates was leading a school what are the questions he would ask to make education better? And so that's how we came up with Socrates out of school. Amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. And definitely probably an experience that all educators can relate to in a professional development at a time or another. And before we move on, we just want to remind everyone to click on like and subscribe below to keep up to date on our latest videos and content from School Rubric and leading voices like Mark in education from around the world. Mark, I loved visiting your website and seeing the Venn diagram of learning where Socrates, changing education through books, and disappointing professional development intersect as a basis for school improvement. Do you have any empirical evidence to support that framework and that notion that this is a particularly effective lens by which to view and assess school improvement? Empirical evidence, no. But we believe that the impact of questions is as powerful today as it was in ancient Greece. So hopefully if we ask enough questions and we ask the right questions, um, we can be a key player in moving education forward. I'm, I'm convinced that the power of questioning has not diminished from Socrates day to 2020. Right. And, you know, as we talk about the website a little bit more and some of the, some of the things that you have going on, I'm interested in the word that you use on your website, which is a distillation, which is yeah. how you describe how you examine and share information related to books on your website. What exactly is a distillation? Why did you choose this vocabulary? And what is your hope for educators as they come across these distillations? Yeah, that's a great question. So we talked about distilling, we talked about vetting, we talked about curating, we bounced around all these words. And the definition of distilling is to extract for essential meaning. So what we decided we were doing, we were distilling books for educators. And if you think about the power 
of a group of educators scouring books for the right questions and the right research and the right concepts and the right quotes from the authors to move education forward. It's really powerful, right? So we landed on distillation because we want to get to the essence of how we can make education better. And so that's what we've been doing. So what our hope is that anyone who finds our website, um, they read the questions that we're asking. And if we ask 12 questions and only one resonates with you, great. If none of the questions resonate, but you get down to quotes from others and there's a quote from someone else that resonates with you and you can take that quote and put it in a presentation and use with your parents to explain why you're doing a certain initiative at school, great. What are the things we're putting out there? It's an open educational resource. It's all free. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anytime you want. Access what we've got and use it to improve your practice. Use it to make your school better. Use it to make the lives of your students better and more engaging in schools. That's our hope. A great resource and definitely we want educators to check that out. And talking a little bit more in depth about distillations, it appears that the distillations that you have on your website currently are mainly of books. Do you have any plans on including other distillations on other pieces of literature, such as education research studies, or perhaps even conducting your own research? Yeah, we've talked about this. There aren't any plans currently to conduct our own research. So I think we have the people where we could do it well. Um, we're focused on books because we believe that there's so many, there's so many great books out there right now that aren't improving the practice of educators. If you, if you take away Mindset by Carol Dweck, I don't think there's another book out there that educators can universally quote and universally use to get better. I think about Daniel Pink's Drive. It would be great if that book were part of every educator's lexicon. I think about Thanks for the Feedback by Stone and Heen. I mean, that's a, something that every administrator should know. You know, what are the three different types of feedback you can give? There's appreciation, there's coaching, and there's evaluation. And the, one of the problems with feedback is we often give one category when the person receiving it is expecting the other. I mean, these seem like little things, but they're actually huge things. And so we're trying to take all the books that are out there and incorporate them into educational practice. I think when we feel like we've done a good job there, we'll continue to work with books, but we're going to move on to scholarly journals. And I think podcasts may be the next great resource as well. There are a ton of great podcasts out there. So that, that's my guess for the next sort of mediums that we'll dive into. Absolutely. Pretty interesting and, and point well taken about the books. Um, Mark, I'm really curious because you have such great theoretical knowledge with what you're doing with Socrates out of school and the distillations, yet you're also an experienced administrator with experience in the U.S. and internationally. So I guess my question to you is, since you have such a fresh outlook on school improvement and professional learning, what are some concrete pieces of advice that you have for younger and aspiring school administrators, utilizing some of your thinking and philosophical alignment you've developed through your work at Socrates Head of School? Uh, great question. I hope all young administrators out there question everything. And I don't mean it in an arrogant, you know, throwing your title around kind of way, but in a genuine and thoughtful way, why are we doing what we're doing? So I'll give a macro example and a micro example. I think a macro example is you could ask at your school, do all high school students need to take math past algebra? Um, Andrew Hacker talks about, or in the math myth, Andrew, ha Andrew Hacker talks about how the average engineer out there only uses eighth grade math. That doesn't mean we don't need engineers who need calculus, but the average engineer is only using eighth grade math. And yet we're living with this myth that the whole populace needs calculus and trig and algebra too. And it's, it's just not true. So I hope that I'm part of, or I can spark the next generation of administrators to push the envelope on things like that. What's best for our students? So math teachers historically have been asked, well, how, why do I need to know this? And then they kind of struggle or they can figure out why you need to know cosines and then they'll give a specific example. But I actually think that's the wrong lens. We shouldn't be saying, why do I need to know this problem? We should be saying, why do we need to know these subjects? And if you, you survey 100 successful and happy people and you give them questions about Algebra 2 and Calculus, my guess is the percentage of people that can do those problems is pretty low. And I hope the next generation of administrators or including my generation, we can really change that. So that's kind of a macro example of what I hope we're doing. On a micro level, I would say, can you commit to digitally sharing your agendas ahead of time and have the purpose stated at the top? 
seems like a small thing, but my guess is you've been in many meetings as I have that aren't run that efficiently and meetings can go off track quickly when the purpose isn't stated. And if you digitally share your agenda and you let everyone else edit it, you'll develop a sense of trust and transparency that I think really matters. And then finally, any, any new administrator, I, I hope they subscribe to our mailing list. We're gonna put in your inbox a new book distillation a week. And if it, if it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, wait next week. We'll have another one coming out. Awesome, Mark, appreciate the examples. And I think that's really helpful. Uh, you have another number of individuals who've joined your team with interesting titles such as Joyful Questioner, Curious Questioner, Third Degree Questioner. Apart from these interesting titles, and I'd love to hear more about the story behind these, what exactly is your organization's goal in terms of products and services that you'll be offering? And who exactly would you describe as your audience? Sure, so, so the background is we're all questioners and we wanted to put that in our title. So it, it fits philosophically. It also fits because it allows us to play multiple roles. If I've got someone who's distilling books and all of a sudden they want to become an editor, we don't need to worry about title changes or official movement like that. And I got that idea from Joy Inc., which is a book about Menlo Innovations that Richard Sherman wrote. And so they run a software development company or an engineering firm. And every Monday, the engineers show up and they get paired with a new person. And what that does is it slows down the work on Monday, but it makes the quality of the work better by Friday because the new person on the team asks questions about decisions that have been made so they fully understand and they can question things and make it better. So I'm hoping that we're all interacting in a way that make our questions more powerful. But to answer your question more specifically, our audience is anyone looking to improve the student learning experience. It doesn't matter if you're a first year teacher, it doesn't matter if you've been a superintendent for 30 years. If you're interested in seeing what research is out there and what thought leaders are saying about leading and learning, then Socrates Head of School is gonna be the place for you. Mark, I love all this information. Wish we could talk a little bit longer, but if folks are interested in finding out more information about your work about Socrates Head of School, where can they go? So we're at SocratesHeadOfSchool.com. It's a mouthful, but that's the URL. Excellent. Sounds good. Again, Mark Engstrom, the Chief Questioner at Socrates Head of School, Middle School Division Head at Episcopal School of Baton Rouge. You can visit at SocratesHeadOfSchool.com. Mark, thanks for staying with us today. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Wallace. It's been great.